Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire, and welcome back to the Isle of Axome. This is Kid B with Allthorpe. Kidby is a village in North Lincolnshire situated just off the A18 west of Scunthorpe and on the western bank of the River Trent. We're back on the Isle of Axone with this one touching another of its 12 parishes. Politically, Kidby with Althorpe is one of the parishes that forms the Axome North Ward, the six northernmost parishes on the Isle. This is a big area of the Isle of Axome too, with a population at the 2011 census of 1,930. Most people here live in Kidby, which is where we begin. It's pronounced Kidby despite being spelt Kidby. The parish covers the small village of Althorpe as well as Derrythorpe too, which we'll touch on later, meaning this one has the title of Kidby with Althorpe. So despite the fact that you're watching this at the end of February, uh, we're not too... Uh, far gone from Christmas at the time of filming and Kidby still has its Christmas tree up Which obviously isn't lit now. I imagine that looked quite nice You have to be a little careful what you call Kidby and what you call Althorpe here as well The Kidby village sign you'll have seen in the thumbnail and in the introduction earlier is sighted at the end of the B1392 Where it touches the A18 but technically speaking some of the south of Kidby is in fact Althorpe that's the part that includes the newer houses towards Kidby Bridge and the primary school. Now normally we're used to seeing things like stalls that have eggs or things on them. Here in Kidby, look at this, free dog treats. <laughs> I'm not going to take them, uh, but if anyone, uh, <laughs> if anyone wants them, that's where they are. Kidby is split into two parts too. The main village lies to the south of a swing bridge over a waterway we've met before. Kidby's economic significance lies in that it was chosen as the destination for that waterway, the Stainforth and Kidby Canal, which opened in 1802. We'll see that later. The northern end has some of the village's largest landmarks, including a power station. That area is known as North End. The ecclesiastical parish covers the approximate area of the civil parish, with St Oswald's Church in Althorpe shared with Kidby. The parish's group of churches includes those at Amcott and Belton. Before 1996, Kidby and Althorpe were both in the Booth Ferry district of Humberside. There were eight parishes in the Isle of Axome at that time. Kidby hasn't always existed as one either. Rather, Althorpe used to give its name to the entire area. The parish of Amcots, which is a little further downstream on the western bank of the Trent, was created from part of the old Althorpe parish in 1850. The population of the place has grown around various industrial ventures, as well as the canal, Kidby Power Station and a small port for inward bound timber and scrap metal have seen the village grow over the decades. In December 2013, severe flooding from the River Trent affected Kidby when around 80 homes were flooded, leading to over 500 properties being evacuated. The static flood defences in the area were breached and Kidby Pumping Station, a major landmark here, was flooded internally. Kidby's three public houses are now closed. These were the Barge, which was previously called the Friendly Fox and the Friendship, the Old South Yorkshire, which was fire damaged in 2011, although there are plans to rebuild it, and the Mariner's Arms, which was closed in 1991 and subsequently used as a private school. Demographically, Kidby with Althorpe's population is spread over a wide area of 11.97 square kilometres, which gives it a population density of 157.9. The general ethnic makeup here is white British at 98.2% and almost 60% of the population is of working age. There's not many retired folks out here. The average house price in Kidby comes in at £121,000. For Oldthorpe it's much higher, a house there will set you back £327,000. 
You know, those of you who are unfamiliar with Kidby, you know, who probably don't live in North Lincolnshire or anywhere around here, um, are probably watching this video and thinking to yourself, you know, it's not a very pretty place. It isn't. Kidby isn't a very pretty place. But at, at the same time, I don't think it tries to be because it was always built, you know, for, for, the, for the industry around here. Um, and I think that really is, 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 is the thing that you have to take away from this, that, that Kidby is not one of those villages that likes to show itself off a lot. It's, it's one of those places that was built for a purpose. It's functional. Um, and it certainly certainly does that. It's it's very it is very functional, and uh, the people around here I I imagine are still very proud of it. Amenities are pretty good here. This school is Althorpe and Kidby Primary School, opened in 1975. Technically, this is in Althorpe and not Kidby. Kidby also has a fish and chip shop. This is W J and T McDonald. There's also a small post office and a shop, much like the one over the river in Gunnis. Although there are no pubs here, Kidby and Althorpe Working Men's Club is open daily for the consumption of alcohol. The concert room and upstairs room are available for hire for any functions. Kidby's main sports and recreational area is New Generation Park, right next to the school and on the bank of the Trent. It's run by a charity to provide this open space for the villagers. Kidby Juniors Football Club play here. I wonder how many footballs have been lost in the past thanks to them being kicked over the riverbank. Now from here in this park you can see the bank of the Trent. I'm not going to go and walk over there to have a look at the Trent because we're going to be seeing plenty of that in a while anyway. Behind St Oswald's Church Hall is a second smaller park and play area. This isn't far away from the area that had the Christmas tree. Speaking of that building, here it is. As far as I can tell, and I'm happy to be corrected, Kidby has no village hall, which makes this the only communal building in the village. There's a garage along the main street. This is MS Buckley Motors. There's also a small surgery in the main housing estate, Trent View Medical Practice. Kidby is served by public transport fairly well too. Like Gunnis, there are seven bus routes that run through the village, terminating at either Scunthorpe or Gull. Kidby's railway station right next to Kidby Bridge is in fact called Althorpe, despite being closer to Kidby. This station was originally known as Kidby and Althorpe. This is not the first station that Kidby has had. The first Althorpe station, opened by the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, was on the original line over the Trent the very same line that we saw the bridge abutments for in Burringham. When the line was moved across the river on the present bridge, a new station was opened, and this is that station still very much in use. The majority of services at Althorpe are operated by Northern Trains, with one train per hour to Doncaster and one train per hour to Scunthorpe. There's also a single daily service between Cleethorpes and Manchester Airport. The old school is perhaps one of the most striking old buildings in the village. You won't find much online about this, but that doesn't matter because outside the current school is an information board. The old school served the children of the area, including those from Amcots, as their school closed until 1961. The most obvious natural landmark here is the River Trent. Once again, we're able to climb the riverbank at certain points and get a good look across the water to Gunnis. The river is tidal and here at Kidby it's monitored for its levels. The usual range of the River Trent at Kidby is between 0.61 metres and 6.6 metres. It's been between these levels for 90% of the time since monitoring began. So here they're a little distant but both the ports that we came across in Gunnis you can see from here. There's the one over there that's near Kidby Bridge, that's Gunnis Wharf. And then if I pan the camera around you can just about see in the very far distance uh, Grove Port. Uh, so there you go. There's a small picnic area here too with a boat used as a planter. Kidby Pumping Station is situated between the main part of Kidby Village and the North End. It was built in the 1930s and pumps water from Hatfield Chase into the Trent. Since 1945 it's also dealt with water from the North and South Soap Drains. 
Whilst the pumping station serves to drain excess water into the Trent, it also keeps enough water in the lagoon and channels you can see behind these railings to serve the 37,000 hectares of farmland upstream. It also prevents water from flowing back from the Trent into the lagoon during high tides or flood events. Control of water levels is achieved through the use of six penstock gates, five diesel powered pumps and one electric pump. Following the flood in 2013 and the damage it sustained, the pumping station was redesigned in 2014 in order to eliminate further flood risk. So what you're seeing here at the pumping station is not just one river, you're seeing three rivers and they actually are called the three rivers. Now we'll talk about these a little bit later because at the other end where the three rivers begin, they're actually man-made channels as opposed to rivers, they're more like canals. Uh, we'll talk about them there uh, and how they came to be and why they flow downstream through the pumping station and into the River Trent. Kidby Bridge is not the only bridge of note here. We'll take a closer look at that one in a moment, but first there's this one to consider. There are canal locks at the point where the Stainforth and Kidby Canal connects with the River Trent. On the canal, just before these locks, the B1392 road crosses the canal over the Kidby Swing Bridge. Half a mile further along the canal, a railway line crosses the canal over the Kidby Sliding Bridge, which is also known as the Vazen Sliding Railway Bridge. The canal is now mostly a leisure waterway for pleasure boaters, with Kidby being at the end of the line. So you might remember these from uh, some places in Doncaster. This is another swing bridge, and this one opens in a in that kind of fashion um, when boats come through. Nothing coming through at the moment though, so I'm happy just to hang around here for a, for a moment. And there's Kidby Lock. Again, runs out into the River Trent. There's a lot of water features here in Kidby, isn't there? A lot of water features, but it is a place that was built primarily for um, river transport. So, you know, <laughs> it makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? According to this sign alongside the canal, there used to be a market here on the bank of the waterway. That would be this area you're looking at now. It's amazing to think how much time has changed this area. PD ports are here now. Like Dunnis, this is a strategically placed inland port on the River Trent. Easy sea access is provided via the Humber Estuary. And again, there's excellent transport connectivity via the UK's motorway network. They handle a variety of cargo with particular specialisms in steel handling and storage. They have a general cargo berth and 4,000 square meters of warehousing and open storage areas. PD ports also run Grove Port over the river. You can't escape the fact that Kidby Bridge is the biggest landmark here. Officially, this is known as the King George V Bridge and as Kidby Lifting Bridge. Its 50 meter electrically powered bascule was one of the first of its type in Britain and when built was the largest in Europe. The bridge opened on the 21st of May 1916, at which time the 3,000 ton lifting span was Europe's heaviest bascule bridge. The bridge has not been lifted since 1956. In 1960 it was widened and the headroom was increased and the bascule was fixed in position. At the same time, the signal cabin was removed from the bridge structure and the tracks on the railway were fixed in place. So here on Kidby Bridge, you do get a good sense, don't you, of how industrial this part of North Lincolnshire is. We can see it all here. There's Gunnis Wharf. The name of that ship, by the way, is the Celtic Mariner. There's a website which I can direct you to, in fact, called Vessel Finder, where you can find out all about the ship if you know its name. But we have Gunnis Wharf there. We have Kidby Power Station over there. We've got some wind turbines. Obviously we can see Kidby Port over there as well. And I, I suppose the pumping station's there too, but it's obviously not in shot at the moment. Can't quite see that. But of course then you have Kidby Bridge. Kidby Power Station is a 734 megawatt electric gas-fired power station at the northern end of the village. The station is operated by SSE Thermal. Kidby Power Station was built on the site of a former coal-fired power station which opened in 1952 and closed in 1984. It was commissioned in 1996. 
1999, Scottish Hydro applied to add another 710 megawatt electric of capacity at Kidby, and a variation to this consent was granted in November 2016. The project, called Kidby 2, was announced in May 2018. SSC also owns a 68 megawatt electric capacity wind farm, Kidby Wind Farm, nearby. This was England's largest onshore wind farm and started operating in July 2014. The north end of Kidby also has a water tower not too far away, and this is known as the Church Lane and Kidby Water Tower. Althorpe is a small village to the south of Kidby, four miles west of Scunthorpe, and the same distance southeast of Kroll on the A18 road. This is a wildly different settlement to Kidby, and much less industrial, although Althorpe is the location for some of Gunnis Wharf's overflow storage warehouses. Now, if you were to take the road towards West Butterwick from here, in Althorpe, you would first pass through a little hamlet called Derrythorpe. There you go, Derrythorpe Road. And it's effectively just uh, a linear settlement along the bank of the Trent. Now, from what I can tell, famous last words I know, from what I can tell, it's just houses, just residential. There might be a farm or two there as well. If I miss, if, if I miss anything by not going through Derrythorpe, please do let me know because my plans do not involve walking or driving down there, I'm afraid. The Doomsday Book records the Lords of the Manor in 1066 as Alnoth and Ulfenman. In 1086, the Lord and Tenant-in-Chief was Geoffrey of Ligersh. The settlement was small, with one ploughland and six soakmen. The grand white building seen here from the riverbank is the Grade II listed Old Rectory, one of the most stunning buildings in the village. The 1620s scheme by Cornelius Vermoyden for the drainage of the Isle of Axome and Hatfield Chase had a direct effect on Althorpe. The southern arm of the River Torn was blocked, the course of the other arm was straightened by cutting a drain and its waters emptied through a sluice into the River Trent here in Althorpe. A second long drain was cut running parallel to the River Torn. In the early 19th century, an additional outfall, Folly Drain, was constructed at Derrythorpe. Kidby Bridge also had an effect on the village. The modern A18 crosses the bridge and until the M180 motorway, one mile to the south, opened in 1979, this was the main east to west route to Grimsby through Scunthorpe. As a result, the amount of traffic passing through Althorpe was quite large thanks to the old route of the A18 previously running through the village. This was later diverted to the northwest. So that's Burringham on the opposite bank. And you can see a few landmarks we saw in that video just under my finger there that's the take a gander sort of here-ish is where that gate got the back of my ankle if you haven't seen the Burringham video go and watch it and have a laugh at my expense and then over there just in shot is the top of the church the church of saint oswald in althorpe was rebuilt in 1483 on the site of an earlier church it was rebuilt by Sir John Neville, MP and Sheriff of Lincolnshire in the perpendicular style. There are carvings above the west window which show shields bearing the arms of the Neville family quartered with those of the Newmarch family and the Mowbray family, the latter of which were a large land-owning family on the Isle of Axome. There's also a relief carving of a ram and a beer or wine cask which is reputed to indicate the builder of the church, Lambton. During restorations in 1864, layers of paint were removed from a sedilia, which is a stone seat, which revealed a brass plaque depicting a small half figure in medieval clothes and an inscription in Latin reading, Here lies William de Lound, formerly Clerk of Chancery of our Lord the King, on whose soul may God have mercy. William was the vicar at Althorpe. Okay, believe it or not, guys, this is not a park or anything like that. It's actually a cemetery. And it's right next to the church but as you can see there's only i can see three gravestones there's two there and there's one over there by the wall but here look consecrated ground games or car parking in this churchyard are strictly prohibited with a date stone for 1903 kelly's directory of 1896 
lists a William Stevenson as living at Lansdowne House in Althorpe. The Stevenson family would appear to be quite important to Althorpe. Here's Althorpe's war memorial sited next to the Stevenson Memorial Hall. William Stevenson Memorial Hall is suitable for a wide range of uses as a private hire venue. Check out the clock here too, made by Bell Brothers of Doncaster. The village pub has closed down. It used to be called the Dolphin Inn and it was on the main A18 road. The original Dolphin Inn stood on the River Trent at the end of Ferry Lane, originally called Dolphin Street. There's a picture of the former pub in today's picture bit. Right, about time you guys had a picture bit now for uh, Kidby with Althorpe and here it comes right now. So as promised, we're finishing this episode at the beginning of the Three Rivers. And to do that, we need to cross the A18. We're miles out of Kidby here, miles away from Althorpe as well. This is the A18 heading towards um, the uh, motorway. Now here, you'll come across the start of the Three Rivers. There we go, here's one of them. There are three man-made channels. Let's talk a little bit about these now. The outfalls, which we mentioned in Althorpe, were eventually replaced by a new outfall for the Three Rivers. These are the three man-made channels which run northward to Kidby Pumping Station. This is all part of the drainage system of Hatfield Chase, something which has been compared in the past to a map of the London Underground as watercourses flow over, under and into one another before becoming these three channels. Today, the watercourses of Hatfield Chase are managed by the corporation of the level of Hatfield Chase Internal Drainage Board. They're responsible for the drainage of an area of 30.8 square miles and the maintenance of 84.5 miles of watercourses. That includes these three channels and several drains, all with different names. The southern end of the channels, where we are now, is called Pilfrey Junction. One of the drains is the Hatfield Waste Drain, which crosses under the North Engine Drain before the junction, and then becomes the North Channel. The Centre Channel is formed by the North Engine Drain and the River Torn, while the South Channel carries the waters of the South Engine Drain and the Folly Drain, which we mentioned earlier. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Kidby with Althorpe. Wow, it's a big one, isn't it? It's, it's massive. You, if you look at the map, you don't really sort of get a sense of how big it actually is. You look at it and you think, oh, Kidby Bridge, little village, all thought tiny hamlet. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> it's not quite like that at all. It's, uh, it's a big one and there's a lot here, a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. And I've probably not covered it all, but I've, I think I've definitely done the main parts of it. And that's really as much as, as I can expect to do with one like this. Um, so yeah, that's uh, another one off the list in North Lincolnshire. I'll be back next week with somewhere else in this district, but for now, this has been the parish of Kidby with Althorpe, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.